Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Art with Liz at the Hoboken Public Library and on Zoom and YouTube Live. I am thrilled today, absolutely thrilled, to do our final French-speaking artist for the month of July. French-speaking artists have been our focus. Before we begin, I want to thank the Hoboken Public Library for affording us this incredible opportunity to do creative work either here at the library or in the comfort of our own homes during this still difficult period of COVID. Today, oh, and some ground rules. Please stay muted um, unless you have comments to make, at which point you are totally welcome to unmute and speak your piece. We will have sharing at the end of class. And those of you who are at home, you can unmute to show your work to us uh, if you need advice or encouragement. Today, I am delighted to be introducing an artist to you who is one of our very own here in Hoboken. He is Ibu Ndoy. Ibu. Um, interestingly enough, is my husband and dear friend. We have known each other for over 20 years. I first met Ibu in 2002 when he came to my studio during the Hoboken Open Studio Tour. And that was my introduction to him and his incredible art. Ibu had intended to come today, but with regrets and his apologies, uh, he came home from work last night with laryngitis. So it's really it would be a waste of time for him to come today because he can't talk. And he woke up this morning still with no voice. So he's very sorry. Ibu walked into my studio 20, what is it, 21 years ago? And the rest is history. Uh, we became friends and collaborators. He comes from Dakar, Senegal, which is primarily a French speaking country. There are many tribal languages in Senegal as there are thousands of tribal languages across the continent of Africa. There are hundreds of countries in Africa and within each country in Africa, there are distinct ethnic and cultural groups. They have different languages, they have different customs, they have different religious beliefs and practices. Ibu is a master of an African tradition called reverse glass painting. And I'm going to show you some of his work digitally. And I've also brought in samples of his actual work. Those of you who are here at the library, you'll get to actually look at it up close and personal. And those of you at home, I'm obviously going to show it to you on camera. He's done many, many different styles, all of which you can see immediately are his work. He has a very distinct personal style, but his subject matter changes, his color palette changes, and his technique and media changes. And I think you're gonna enjoy the variety in his work. We are gonna focus primarily today on his portraits because today in our drawing activity, in the art activity that we are gonna be engaged in, we too are gonna to focus on portraiture. For those of you who are my veteran artists, you're gonna get right to work. For those of you who need a refresher course or an introduction to how to draw the human face, I'm gonna be putting images up on the screen and giving you tips and skills for drawing the human face. Bill, our model is here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Bill. And he will be posing for us. We will do the same 
routine where Bill will do some quick poses. I want you to concentrate on his face and his facial expressions today. I'm gonna to talk more about that later. But if you prefer drawing full figure, that's an option as well. And sorry to those of you here, I'm glancing at Margo and her cat. And I just have to say, wow, Margo, your kitten is adorable. You really got me distracted. <laughs> Loving it. Being needy. <laughs> and Donna, it looks like you have a, no, it's your hand. Okay. All right, so let's begin. Oh, a little bit more about Ibu. Um, Ibu came from Dakar. He's been living in the United States for since 2002, 21 years. And uh, he lived for most of the time I've known him in Jersey City. But since our marriage, he has lived here in Hoboken and he's really proud to call it home. If you are more interested in him personally, go to the Hoboken Historical Museum website. There is an interview of Ibu that's really quite interesting. There's also an interview of Ibu and I together that our model, Bill Curran, was the moderator for. And he did a great job interviewing us. I want to show first, if I can make it happen, you know, I sometimes have technological problems. I have a very short video clip that Ibu created of his own work. It's a lot of fun. So he also does digital drawings. So part of this video clip is an animation of his digital work, plus a collage of all the different kinds of work that he creates. I think even including some of his sculpture. He does wrought iron sculpture that are, I think, very beautiful. Let's see if we can make the video clip work. It's short, I think it's like two minutes. And it'll give you like an overall taste of the kind of work that he does. So I'm gonna open the video up. And Laura, I'm mm. counting on you to Help me make this happen. I'm about to share the screen. Here's the video. Can you see it, everyone at home? I'm getting a yes and a thumbs up. Here we go. The volume is way up. It's up on my computer as well. Okay. I hope you enjoy. And I should say the music is from Senegal. Yeah. Sounds kind of Irish. Now, this is a traditional African instrument. I'm forgetting the name of it, I'm embarrassed to say. Ibu's mother was a seamstress, and as a child, Ibu worked with her in her studio workshop. He fell in love with the patterns in African fabric. So he puts patterns inspired by what he saw and fell in love with as a child. He uses very bright colors, which are also inspired by African fabric. In the upper left are some of his reverse glass paintings on jars of all different sizes. So obviously this is not about portraiture, but I think it gives you a taste of the kind of work that Ibu does.
Great colors, right? All right. So now we're going to look at some of his portrait work. And again, I want you to. Oh, wait, how do I get out of the movie? I guess I just click the red dot. OK, good. I, you're going to get a sense now of the different types of styles he uses. And I'm going to explain the origin of these styles. I'm opening up an image now. Which does not seem to have opened. Bear with me. Here we go. So this is one of his more, what he calls traditional styles of artwork. And Eva was kind of at the cutting edge of the reverse glass painting tradition in Dakar when he was coming up as a young man. In the traditional style, it was very realistic. And for the most part, the images that are shown in traditional reverse glass painting are of historic figures or religious people or leaders in the community that are important to the local people in either Dakar or other cities or towns or villages in Senegal. So this is of the more traditional style. He loves doing these because he can show the different modes of tribal dress. I forget which tribal group this person is from. The fact that this person has long hair and locks is significant. There are tribal markings on the person's forehead. And this type of jewelry also indicates what group this person is from, what ethnic group this person is from. I think it's a wonderful portrait. I'm thinking to David, whom we looked at yesterday, notice the solid background, although David was had a very dark, somber palette and Ibu's paintings, for the most part, are very bright. And he was a breakaway artist because these hot, bright colors are not really traditional in the old style of reverse glass painting. Reverse Reverse glass painting, meaning it's on the inside of the outside. Yes, I'm going to talk about that more later, but Bill is absolutely correct. I'm so glad he brought it up. All the work in reverse glass painting is done on the reverse or back side of the glass. It is not done on paper. All of the work is done on glass. And I'm going to show you that momentarily. So the lines and the colors are all painted on the glass, but on the back. In French, it's called sous painting, literally translated to under glass. Notice the fancy picture frame. Ibu is famous for his dumpster diving. He finds old frames and glass all over the streets of Jersey City and Hoboken. And people donate to him. He's a lucky camper. Let's look at uh, one more traditional style. And then we'll look at some of his other. Again, you can see 
the colorful jewelry and clothing on this person. I'm saying this person, I'm not identifying gender because frequently when I refer to gender, when I look at Ibu's portraits, I find out I'm wrong. So I don't wanna presume this to me looks like a woman, but Ibu would probably correct me. So I'm not sure, but the head wrap, I think that this is probably a woman. I think the face, look at the expression on the face. Ibu is absolutely fascinated by emotion and expression on the human face. And you can really see that in his work. I love that he used this light color behind the person because it really, really forces you to look at the face and focus on the face. I love his very quick and sure line work. So this more kind of what even he would call sloppy style. This is not traditional. The fact that it's realistic is traditional, but the kind of haptic um, application of paint and lines was breaking with tradition when he started his reverse glass painting work. All right, so now let's look at some of his other portraiture. Very different, but very evil. Mm. Those of you who were in my class yesterday at the Multipurpose Center, this style is familiar to you now. This is a work on canvas, not on glass. So Ibu doesn't always work on glass. He often works on canvas or any kind of fabric that he can find, quite frankly. Again, look at the amazing expression on this per person's face. It's, I mean, you might even call it grotesque. Very different. Very abstract now, not realistic at all, although you can certainly definitely see the features of the face. It looks like a mask, particularly an African mask, which makes sense. Not an Irish mask. In Senegal, carving is not, not a tradition. Yeah. It's one of the few um, African countries where carving is not a tradition. Mali, which is the, right next door in another French speaking country, they are famous for their carving. Okay, we'll look at something else in that style. I as always have more pictures than I can choose from. I think this is a portrait. Yeah. This one is on glass. Good question from Heather, thank you. Yes and no. So he sketches everywhere. He carries a sketchbook with him all the time. He's often sketching on the subway or if he is in the subway station, you'll see him sketching. He likes to photograph people surreptitiously. So 
they're based on people that he sees every day, but people don't sit for him. He doesn't usually draw from photographs. The traditional images though, are based on pictures of real people. Yes, for the most part. When I've seen him working, he's looking at pictures of real people. Is that always the case? I'm not sure. This is a biggie, but I don't know the exact size. It's big. Yes, so good question from Teresa. His work varies in size. And let me show you what I mean. Wait till you see this. I'm trying to find one that, I'm gonna show you this. I'm not sure it's figurative, but I'm gonna show you this to you just so you can get a sense of the scale of his work. not opening up. Okay, bear with me here. We're just in slow-mo today. Let me, I'm gonna try another image. That one is not opening for some reason. Oh, here it is, okay. Oh, this is actually a picture of what was at the time a work in progress, but you can see the scale of some of his work. So this is a painting that is, 10 feet by 12 feet, it is on canvas. Uh, he, I think he was using house paint on this particular painting and it is figurative. I don't know those of you at home, if you can see this, look at where my cursor is. There are figures in this, but they are imaginary, Heather. These are, he often, and this is, I think, I hope I'm not wrong, but, I've seen this in other African art, a combination of spirit and human form. And he does call them his spirits. And they frequently have animal body parts as well as human body parts. And this is definitely a tree, but it looks like it has eyes mm. on it. I'm gonna show you one more digital image and then I'm gonna show some of his actual real stuff and then we're gonna to go to work. Woohoo! No, oh, what happened? Verifying this image. Not sure what that means. All right, well, I don't want to wait for this. <laughs> it's not, there's no red dot. Thank you. All right, so let's look at some real stuff. Oh, there it is. Oh, two pictures opened at the same time. Yeah, they're big files. Okay, let's look at this one. So this is a collage. This is also a giant piece, collage mixed media. So this is another series of works that he did 
he does a lot of his scratching. The white lines that you see here are literally scratched into the surface. He, he's used oil pastel very thickly and he etches the lines into that. There's cardboard, there's fabric. Um, that's, so you get a sense of his mixed media creations as well. And the different expressions on the people's faces, I think they're so fun. Okay. I'm gonna now show you some of the real things. So Laura, I should come up to the camera. Those of you in the room, if you wanna gather around so this you saw this one on the screen and I may open it in a moment so that you can actually see what it looks like from the back. Remember, this is all the work is done on the glass. So when you see it through the front, you see the entire image. I'm going to take a second to open it. And I try to use non arthritic fingers. Do you have a pair of fingers or a pair of scissors? Not a grit scissors. Can you show the first image again for the people at home? Can you see it? There you go. Okay. I'm trying to take I'm trying to open it, but I my fingers don't have the strength anymore to. Oh, so Laura, Laura's going to try and open that so I can show you what it looks like from the back. This one I can't open, but I'll show it to you anyway. How does it look on the screen? You saw this visually as well. And it's done in the same technique as the other one. All the work is drawn and painted on the back of the glass. Liz, I have a question. Um, how come they do it on the back of the glass instead of the front? I've always wondered about that. If you do it on the front, it's what you're doing. If it's acrylic? Even if it's oil and then you paint, usually it's going to crack and chip and peel off. If you do it on the back of the glass, it's preserved forever. <laughs> I have skipped frame. Yeah, it does when you can decide which is the back of the glass. It could be either or, unless of course it's beveled edge. Okay, this is another one. But the thing is, it's like the the top is reversed, so you can see the details first. Yes. You always do the small details first. And then the larger shapes. This one, there's too much glare, unfortunately. It's really a lovely work. This is a good question. I, at least 100 meters. And, and did they choose the glass because they didn't have fabrics and it was what was there to do it? The tradition came from Arab countries, Muslim countries. I'm not sure the answer to that question. I do know that in Africa, people will use everything and anything 
that they can get their hands on. The tradition or the the idea of recycling and reusing is just a way of life in Africa. So the glass was there and, and they used it and that was what was used by the teachers who taught the tradition and and it grew. Maybe it held up there in the too. That's a possibility yeah. also. I'm not sure. So this is a book that Eva was nice enough to let me bring. He also makes handmade books. Yeah, we can see it on the camera. And this is all found cardboard. <laughs> Fabric. So he yeah. stitches. I don't know if you folks at home can see, but he frequently stitches. Remember, I said his mother was a seamstress. He glues the fabric on and paints over it. And he makes thousands of these art books. And those of you who worked with me yesterday, you saw this one. So I'll just, these are portraits. So I'll show it again. You can see the variety of expression you can see in the human face. Thank you, Laura. All right. Now, that was hard work. Thank you, Laura. This is the back of reverse glass painting. Completely abstract, completely messy. When you look at it from the front, however, you see the, the image. So the very fine black lines are done first. And then the painting. From the back, it's a pretty fantastic abstract. But from the front, it's this realistic portrait. Magic, right? I love teaching this technique to children. It's like wow every time. And the other interesting thing, his name. You have to do any writing that you do has to be backwards. Right. <laughs> and that's hard. It looks so fluid and easy, but it's very difficult to do work in this technique. So what would each color have to dry before you put the second one? Sometimes he he does reverse blend painting on this kind of day because the paint dries really quickly. Always afterwards. Always on hot days. He does not do very much of it in the winter. He uses primarily oil enamel paint because it adheres to the glass. Very toxic. So he works outside with a mask on, a big industrial mask. Does it dry? Does it dry quickly? No. All right. Ready to get to work? Uh, yeah, we're late. We're five minutes later than I like to be. Those of you who are here in class, if you're, you know, gentle, I'm going to put these things at the back, and if you would like to look at them up close and personal, you may. Do we have a question for Doris? She's asking if the glass fire is in the film or just no. air Just the air no. And I'm going to ask people here that cannot touch this one that has been taken apart. Yes, because he really doesn't want to touch it. <laughs> just there. Just there. Yes. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, no, there's no kiln involved. Yeah. 
Uh, there's actually a lot in the chat. So here's the deal now. Those of you who are feeling ready to go, we are going to start with three minute poses. We are faced with the challenge because Bill is wearing a mask, but folks who drew him yesterday with the mask on did well. If you do not want to draw Bill, here's my suggestion. Go get a fashion magazine and find some large pictures of faces and copy from the magazines. I brought a folder of magazine photos in for those of you who are here. If you would prefer copying from the magazines, please do. So those of you who are ready to start drawing, go ahead. I always recommend that you start first in pencil, start with a light sketch. If you want to do full figure, go for it. Or if you prefer, and what I really would like you to do today, just look at Bill's face. Portraiture is our thing. And for those of you who want to refresh your course, I am now going to put up on the screen. We figured out how to do this, Laura, right? <laughs> Didn't we figure out how I could put something on the screen and also show Bill at the same time? All right, well, we're trying to figure that out, folks. Go ahead and draw. Everybody start drawing. Yes, I'm going to find the image. Uh, yes, and I can reopen my phone if that will help. This is a three minute. Time starts now, everyone, begin. I want this image. Laura, it's definitely obvious that it's, it's not my cell phone being on. That's the problem. How slow. So, what, did you into the oh, maybe not. I forgot to do that. Yeah, so we're going to do a little technological experimentation. If you lose your view of Bill for a second or two, don't panic. We'll be back. <laughs> um, so listen up, though. The human face, first of all, is an oval. It is symmetrical. Same on both sides. You can actually literally measure the proportions of the human face by eye length. So interesting. Can't prove it to you because we're masked, but. Liz, you don't have the whiteboard feature here. I don't. Mm -mm. Maybe you must have an older version of Zoom. Okay, we'll have to wait because you don't have it. Have to teach me how to yeah. You haven't seen whiteboard down here, have you? Live transcript, chat, participants. Maybe that's why I have so much Zoom interference. Break out. Yeah, we should test it from home. When you get a chance, we could do it over the phone. Okay. All right. Now, how do you make this big? What artists like to do? Start with the oval shape. Start with the oval shape. Got a light line to indicate symmetry of light, light 
convert the line down the middle. And a light line to show where the eye left the Really halfway down the bowl. Another light line halfway between the eyes and the chin. This is where you'll see the bottom of the nose. And between the bottom of the nose and the chin is the mouth. Halfway between the bottom of the nose and the chin. Ears are another great measuring tool. The top of the ear and the bottom of the ear fit exactly between the eyes and the bottom of the nose. Mm -hmm. Not that. It's very cool. The human nose is as long as the eye, from the bridge of the nose to the tip of the nose. I don't care how gigantic your nose is, it's one eye length long. Mm -hmm. The shape of your nose is different from person to person, but you can use the mask to help you see proportion. Notice where the edges of his mask are in relation to the bottom of his eye. Look at where the straps are next to his ears. Use the top of his hand to show where his chin is. Fabulous. Oh, good. Look how good. So good. Keep going. These are warm ups. This is three minutes. We're warming up, everybody. Remember during warm up, and Donna, warm up means exactly that. We're practicing now. Just like when you're warming up at the ballet bar, you are practicing. You're learning a new skill. Spot for the portrait. Right sketch first. You know that for now. Yeah, I'm gonna. Good. 
Those of you who are here, I don't know if you noticed, but I brought in pastels that are for portraits. You can buy them from Dick Lick, a special set of pastels called Portrait. Yeah, we're changing, and we're going to do another three minutes. This is the last three minutes, everyone. <laughs> Begin. You can go to Dick Blick online. I'll put that in the chat in a minute and look up Soft Pastels and the Dick Blick brand. They have portrait sets. Not going to give too much direction at this point because we're warming up. You guys are doing great. Great, great, great. Sally and Shoji, you can't really do portraits. So I recommend you do full figure now, Sally, okay? Or you can look at the TV screen. You want. You're doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Use the mask. It's a great measuring tool. It helps you to see the size of the space. It's actually terrific. Where it peeks in the front is his nose, so it helps you to see exactly where his nose ends. Um, I wonder, is there a way for Donna in particular, I could put an image in the chat, Laura. I could put that diagram of the human face into the chat. Or I could put it in for everyone. Yeah, that's beyond me. You ever you lost me. <laughs> Google Drive I could do, but not while we're that's a great idea. I could send it in the email that I send to everyone. So, oh, Donna's actually left. Oh, that makes me sad. But that's a great idea. We're going to talk more about that at the end. Okay. That's a great idea. Oh, that was stupid. I unplugged the whole thing. It's really hot. Should I replug? It's on my screen. Okay, people at home. The connection to my laptop is making a horrible noise. So, we're trying to fix that. Okay. You can still see Bill, correct? All right, Bill, this is going to be now five minutes. Okay, let's take away your cell phone from the uh, mic, too. Sorry about that, everyone. And I feel like I'm screaming. So, no, no, no. At the senior center, I have to scream to be heard. Where do you have to go? Hurry. There's plenty of room. I don't know where you have to Thank you. 
Folks at home, we fixed the noise problem. Our, our technical genius. He spent so little time in the floor fixing it. Maybe he did the shoulder sign. Still. Still warming up. Look at how big his hand is. A lot of you are stressing out on the hand. So if you're going to focus on the hand, look at how big it is. The same size as his face. And the distance between the thumb and his forefinger at the moment is quite large. So it's a big stretch there. See the opening. That might help you as a measurement. His head is cut off on the screen. I don't know, can you hold that for 10 minutes? That looks difficult. Yeah. Okay. You obviously. For us.
Here, the head is cut off on the top. Loose, light, there. Thank you. In the beginning. Let the line flow in the beginning. All right, so 10 minutes, but still do it fast, come back to make corrections and add detail. Keep it loosey goosey in the beginning. Go big. All right, to be, I wish I could draw as small as you. But Try something different. Challenge yourself. It can open doors. Yeah. Where? It can open a whole new world for you. Um, Teresa, there's a fix it in. You should you should buy fix it. In. Golden acrylic varnish. Don't use it in there. It will fix your drawing so that you'll never get any. It's a little pricey. Yeah. But it's worth every penny. About a million. Oh, is, it, is it cheaper than Big Lift? I don't know. I couldn't get over it. I appreciate it. I'm going to. I'm going to put it in the, the chat. Golden acrylic varnish. Everybody who draws in pastel or charcoal, you want to get this product. Golden acrylic varnish. For spraying pastels and charcoal and Conti crayon and Conti crayon work. Oops. And you can get it on the Dick Blick website and what else did i say you should get at dick lick oh portrait pastels where you can find portraits pastels It's hard typing standing at the podium. Um, after this next post, we're gonna take a break, Bill. Yeah. And I'm going to, then I can put up, <laughs> then I'm going to put up the image of the diagram of the human face and, and talk briefly about it.
for those who, who need a refresher. You have under five minutes left, Bill. I hope that helps. I don't think that was going to be a problem. The finger must hurt. Yay, 
I sure think Shakespeare theater show in Mississippi. Oh, nice. in the park. I had my share of Shakespeare. I still have it. I can't understand. <laughs> no. No, it's a small theater. Oh. Fashion district. It was good. Everybody stretch a little bit. I'm going to put the diagram of the human face up, which I did not have the opportunity to do earlier. I'm going to send it all out to you in an email, too, so that. Um, you can have it at home. So my veteran students, you should have a photocopy of it somewhere in your files. Hello. This should look familiar. Uh, we're still having time delay. I guess they're large uh, files, so it's not opening up. Sorry, folks. Oh, here it is. I'm going to share the screen. So those of you who are maybe not having your best day, those of you who need a review, or those of you who've never seen this before, I put this image up on the screen. Susie, you might want to look, look at the TV. So this is about the proportions of the human face. The face is an oval. It is symmetrical, the same on both sides. The eyes are halfway down the face. The nose is halfway between the eyes and the chin. The mouth is halfway between the bottom of the nose and the chin. And then you can measure the width of the face in eye lengths. One, two, three, four, five eye lengths across. You can measure the length of the nose from the bridge of the nose to the bottom of the nose is one eye length long. And here's my favorite thing about the human face. If you drop a horizontal line from, it doesn't show well on this picture, but trust me, it's true. If you drop a straight line from the inner corner of the eye straight down, it comes to the outer edge of the nose. I'm gonna show you a better diagram in a minute. And if you drop a straight line from the pupil straight down, it goes to the outer edge of the mouth. How amazing is that? And finally, from the outer edge of the eye straight down is the jawbone, the bottom of the jawbone. And remember I said the eyes of the ear, sorry, the bottom of the ear hits the bottom of the nose. The top of the ear hits the eye level. Okay, now look at this picture. I'm going to send these in an email to all of you. I think everyone out there at the moment is on my email list. I'm opening up one more diagram, and then we're going to go back to work for a few short while and then we'll have sharing time waiting for the picture to open everybody at home are you doing well i haven't checked in really with you since we started working i see some thumbs up yay yay
Okay, so I'm going to share the screen quickly. And those of you here are welcome to look at this too. Those of you at home, this might be helpful. I'll enlarge it. Again, the human face is an oval, wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. It is symmetrical. So you can put a guideline vertically through the middle. The eyes are almost halfway down the face. So you can put a horizontal guideline for the eyes. The bottom of the nose is halfway between the eyes and the chin. Hence the horizontal guideline here. And then the mouth is halfway between the bottom of the nose and the chin. If you drop a vertical from the pupil straight down, it will hit the outer corner of the mouth. If you drop a vertical straight down from the inner corner of the eye, it will hit the outer edge of the nose. It's extraordinary how in proportion the human face is. The what nose, from the bridge of the nose to the tip of the nose is one eye length long. The distance between the eyes is one eye length long. So you can use eye lengths to measure distance and proportion on the human face. The ears fall between the bottom of the nose and the eyebrow. I love this drawing. I will, hopefully I'll remember, but I plan to send you this diagram and the first diagram I show in an email. Liz, what did you say? Put it in your files or print it out for further use. All right, any questions before we move on? That, that yes. was very quick. Yes. Um, we have in the past spent a whole month on portraiture. We may do, do it again. Liz, where is repeating? Bill, rested? Yes. Yeah. Well, we Oh, and Lauren says golden acrylic is brilliant. Two coats are best. Yes. Do it in a really well ventilated place, the golden acrylic varnish. It is toxic. You need really good ventilation. I don't want anybody getting sick from that stuff. But it does work. It's the only thing that works to fix charcoal. The only thing. We're at 1120, so let's do a, I would love to do a 20 minute pose, but let's try a 20 minute pose, Bill, get really comfy. So this is super. Get super comfortable, everybody at home, 20 minutes. Start, if you're doing full figure, start with the gestural, capture the entire figure. If you're just doing the portrait, do a very light sketch. You may have time to do more than one. Light sketch first. Don't worry about details like eyelashes or eyeglasses. Leave that till the end. Oh, you're not wearing eyeglasses. Don't worry about the stitching in the mask. That comes at the end. This is a beautiful pose, I think. Let's begin. I forgot to click start. I got so excited about the pose, I forgot to click start. Okay, begin. Yep. Liz, what did you say about the jaw? What is that in line with the jaw?
20 minutes, you can just sit and look at the doctor for a minute. You need time. learning how to punch a slot. There's so many preconceived notions about the way things look. Until we can open our eyes and see. Reduce the human figure down to blocks and ovals. Some people like it. I think Vanessa, you also enjoy it.
Everybody at home good? Liz, I had a question. Unmute, Suzanne, and let me know. Un You're muted. It says I'm unmuted. Can you hear me now? Can you, Can you put it in me? the chat box maybe? Yeah. Not working. Yeah, she doesn't seem to be able to. And there's this no, time I'm... lag. It could just be the time lag. Frustrating. Put type it in the chat, Suzanne. I, I don't know what's It is unmuted. I don't know why we can't hear her. Is your sound off, Suzanne, possibly? Yeah, the sound on your machine. I can hear her. Liz, now you're you muted, though. Yes, we still have a few more minutes in this pose. Suzanne, just keep drawing. You're getting frustrated. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong. A little over eight minutes, Bill, are you okay? <laughs> Not sure. Suzanne is unmuted and she's talking. Is my sound off? No. It's bizarre. Laura is trying to fix the sound problem, Susan.
Just keep drawing for now. Suzanne, say something. Hello, can you hear me? No. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I just checked it. It's it's my volume's on. I don't know if this helps, but I think everybody on the Zoom at home can hear Suzanne, but for some reason there's a disconnect for your end. Is there a switch for that? Everybody. I don't just, want you to lose three, drawing time, two, Suzanne. Three. Just okay. It's we'll okay. keep trying to work on it, and you keep drawing. I'm guessing it's on her end, though. If she can hear me. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. take a vote today. I mean, sharing is really important, but would you prefer drawing? Raise your hand if you'd rather keep drawing. People at home, can you hear me? People at home, I haven't seen your work at all, so you could share. 
the people here could keep drawing. We could do both. Hey Liz, I'm about to head out in a little bit. I could share. Raise your hand if you'd rather keep drawing. Oh. <laughs> well, that's the majority here, but. <laughs> okay. Hey Liz, can you hear me? Two people. Oh, Vanessa, you want to talk or you want to, you're oh. voting? I was just going to say I have to head out. I'm I mute if you have something to say. I'm Vanessa, unmuted. Can you hear me? I can hear you from here. Yeah. Yeah. Can't hear you. Uh, it's always my machine. I don't know what to say, guys. Oh, Vanessa, hold your picture up. I want to see it. Wait, let me spotlight you. Oh, and then I won't have to spot what you're in. Maybe it's the mic. Oh, she said spot. You gotta spotlight her. Well, I don't know how to do that. Okay, hold on. Where's Vanessa? <laughs> Move spotlight. Let's get Vanessa. One sec, Vanessa. Over here, Liz, how do you, uh, when you want to spotlight somebody, I just, yeah, your trackpad's a little tricky. Okay, she's in. Okay, good. All right, you want to go back? Wow, nice. Thank you. Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really Vanessa. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Liz. I think I. I I lost you guys. <laughs> oh, I was muted. Oh, no worries. So, uh, this is a great, great image. Um, I love your use of darks and lights. Really beautiful. And Bill, if you wouldn't mind just posing, because most people here want to keep drawing. And we're going to make this. Vanessa, I'm coming back to you. No worries. Uh, we'll make this a 10 minute and then that'll be really almost the end of class. So this is the new one, everybody. That one was the last one, 15? Last one was a 20 minute pose. So let's begin if you're drawing, begin. And Vanessa, I'm still talking to you. Um, okay. <laughs> so I, I don't have the ability to see the picture that you were working from. The one suggestion I might make is I feel like there may be more hair on the crown of her head on the top. Okay, yeah. So check, check the photograph again. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only yeah. other comment, I, I feel like the nostrils are maybe a little bit too dark. Okay. You might, you might want to tone them down a bit, remove okay. some of that shadow. That's beautiful, Thank really you. beautiful. Well Thank done. You. The hands are great. You've Thank got you. them longer. Right <laughs> size and everything, they're in proportion. Wonderful. Awesome. Anybody else at home who wants to share? Suzanne, now I think maybe we'll be able to hear you. There was a problem with my laptop. I do not. I, I don't know how to do the gallery view on the phone. Oh, too bad. She she seemed to be having 
some problems. Anybody else want to share at home? If you want to keep drawing today, that's fine. We don't always have to have a sharing session. I'll share. Margo, great. It's the last choice. <laughs> this is terrific. That's really, good. really <laughs> terrific. Great proportions. I, I'm trying to remember, was he sitting in the chair with the armrests on this one? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. Okay, good. Yeah, so the proportions are correct. Um, yeah, foreshortening. <laughs> you had a lot of foreshortening. You did well. Thank you. Really good. The more you do, the better you get. You're proving it, guys. Everyone's proving it. Lauren, do you want to share? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm getting the laryngitis now. Stand closer to me, please. You want it? Oh, you're being sarcastic as usual. Anybody else at home want to share? Doris, Lauren? Doris, yeah, your hands up. Okay. Goody. Oh, look at this. Fabulous. Really great. And then Doris, I it looks a one. lot like him. I would I would suggest in that last picture, the, yeah. the dark around the eyes is maybe a tad bit too dark. You might want to lighten that up just slightly, but it's really a powerful drawing. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Did you want to show me a second drawing? You had it up. Yeah, this with the, uh, I did it from a magazine picture. Well done. I wasn't sure about the angle because when the, when the head is tilted, it's a little different with the proportions or it feels that way. It's very, very different. And we'll have a class just on looking at the face from different angles, three quarter profile and things like that. You might want to look, look again at the photograph of the woman on your right. Yeah. The one with the big earring. Mm -hmm. You might want to check out the size of the white of the eye. It feels a tiny bit too big to me. You might want to make the iris, the colored portion, a little bigger. Thank you. I'll try that. Love the earring. And maybe a little more hair on the top of her head. Okay. You got it going on. Anybody else at home who wants to? share. Not forcing anybody to share today. I, I actually today, everybody's doing so well. I don't want to make you stop. I'd rather you kept drawing. So this will be our final pose. Start with the rough sketch, go back to add details later. A little under five minutes left on this one. Maybe it's just I need to upgrade my Zoom. It could be, yeah. Uh, I have to be gone. Um, so we're running low on the battery on this camera, folks at home, just letting you know we should be okay till the end, but yeah. If we go dark on this camera, don't worry, we're still here.
Shirt. Liz, I'll share a watercolor at this time. Oh, yes, please. Who is it? Margo. My cats are asleep. Gotta. <laughs> Getting spotlighted. Hold on. Oh, beautiful. You love those butterflies. I do. <laughs> yeah, gorgeous color. Well done. You started that at the multi purpose center. I remember yes. this one. Yes. <laughs> okay. And it's so sad. The monarchs are now on an, the endangered species list. Oh, no, really? Yeah. And then this is Thanks, Laura. Yeah, keep Very keep well. painting butterflies. We need we need as many images as possible. Yeah, great job, Margo. Thanks. Maya culture, people believe that butterflies are the spirits of the dead. Mm. I love that. Wow, that is beautiful experiences of my life was I landed in a little tiny, like two passenger seat plane in Tikal, Guatemala, just as Millions of butterflies oh, hatch. I mean, millions of butterflies fly everywhere. Every color you can have. I think the more people that leave and teachers traveling on their summer vacations, you know, I got to travel. I thought I was lucky because I thought my civilization was anything Maya they me. Oh, that's great. All right, so July is finished. August. Well done today, everyone. Thank you. Happy birthday, Bill. Thank you. And I'm so proud of each and every one of you at home and here. Keep oh, my Look at magazine photos. You can draw yourself. Look at the mirror. Artists draw themselves because we're always there. Bernie Oh, Bernie Hughes is our next artist. I'll put that name in the And what is her theme? That's good. I like it. Yeah, we're $50. $50. I have a bag. 
I'll give you a hand. Good. Next time. <laughs> See everyone next week. Thanks. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Stay cool, everyone. Hydrate, hydrate. Our artist for next week is Bernie Fuchs. F U C H S. I will be sending everyone an email letting you know more about it. Congratulations.